Hi. Hello, YouTube family. Here we are again. I did try and set it up so that I can read, actually read the live chat in case you guys are back out there again today. I know some of you can't join me till the evenings and I love, I love that you um, are watching it later in the evenings and getting it done because that was some of you guys that can't make my morning classes that inspired me to do this. So again, I thank you. So we're going to use our strap today. Have that handy. I want you to get up on your blocks and remember our sit bones are right on the edge of it so that your hips can fall open quite naturally. I had to change rooms because the rug was just too problematic. It doesn't work with yoga mats. And I just thought I might as well get in the living room now, although it's cool. It was minus two when I went to the yoga studio this morning and taught my intermediate class. So that's cold for the west coast of Canada, for those that live here and for those that don't, you know that. Sorry, messing, messing, messing. We're going to start with our breathing exercise and bring our energies together with the sound. And remember what I said in the first class, whenever you're at a sound healing and if you're not going to any yet, you really want to get yourself to some sound healings. The frequency, the medicine that is for your body, how it resets your nervous system is good medicine right there. It also talks to your body on a cellular level. There's all kinds of beautiful mechanics in our body that respond to sound chambers like pyramids and stuff like that. The earthly beings that we are, sound is a very good medicine. So start going to your local sound healings and listen to the tone right to the end, remember? And then again, breathe in that medicine. Three is my lucky spiritual number. It brings me into the studio. It's supposed to allow you to release everything that is now outside of what we're doing here, which is getting into our bodies and into our breath, which is healing ourselves on a daily basis, which is honoring ourselves on a daily basis, which is reminding ourselves that we are in these earthly bodies, very temporary, temporarily, and let's treat them like temples. You know, not like what we did in the 90s. <laughs> We're going to start with our breathing. Five for five for five. Remember on Monday I taught you what the Mula Bandha was. That's when you're going to hold in your sphincter. Hold that life force energy here in your belly. You're going to just tighten up from the root chakra right up to mid-ab. We're going to inhale first for five seconds. Apply Mula Bandha for five seconds and exhale with enthusiasm for five seconds. Taking in a nice, long, beautiful inhale. Apply Mula Bandha. Repeat that four more times. And remember that your shoulder blades are up and down your back. Your heart center is the most prominent part of your body. Give me your heart center. You are tall in your torso and your crown chakra is being offered to the heavens above. Taking in another nice long beautiful breath. This should be your third. Apply Mulabandra.
two-part yoga breath, remember. And as I said, in a class environment, I would normally be doing three ohms, but we're not doing that today. So, as long as everybody is good, we're going to get started. Today we're going to do our arms. It's very important that you keep your upper body strong, your back straight, and that requires being able to incorporate into your asanas and into your practice and into your daily lives, actually using your arms and using the muscle in them. And the first thing we're going to do for do that while I talk to you a little bit is bring them up and off your shoulders. Make a fist, line up your wrists, and then I want you to send your fingers as far away from your body as you can. And then you're going to do some five for five breaths, just holding them up, and you're going to see how fast they get tired. I want you to pay really close attention to those tired areas. Remember, your shoulder blades are still down your back, and your heart center is still coming towards me. Keep your arms up and keep your hands going away from your body. There's a couple of things going on here. There's a dual action, as there usually is in most of the poses I have you hold for extended lengths of time. I like to get a lot done at once. So we're going to do that. We're going to keep with our breath and we're going to pay attention to what muscles are getting sore. And you know that those are exactly the areas we're going to be working on and strengthening on so that you can do your plank and do your down dog, do one leg or three legged dog, even two legged dog we're now doing with my intermediate class, which is a really fun pose. Keep your hands going away from your body, no slacking off. Take in an inhale, shoulder blades down your back, hands as far away from your body as you can get them. So you're going to start feeling the shoulders and the upper arms and even your triceps when we do, uh, do other things. These parts of your arms need to be strong to hold you through your poses and we do, mo we do lots of movement poses too. So we're going to be working on upper body strength, lower body strength, strengths all the way around. We'll be doing some lengthening and strengthening. But right now, I'm going to have you do this a few times throughout the class, so I wanted you to start off right away with that one. Nice breath. Inhale as you bring your hands back down to the top of your thighs and your elbows are pointing to the wall behind you. Nice breath. So even taking those down, and my arms are relatively strong, I can feel that in my shoulders, although we did an arm class in, in yoga this morning too. I can feel it where I want to feel it, where we get that waving goodbye arm we don't want. There's no reason to have that. And we want to be strong. So what we're going to do first though today is use our strap. So I want you to come off the block, sit bone yourself. When I say that, I mean walk back on your sit bones to your mid mat. Extend your legs out in front of you and grab onto your strap. The placement of your strap, I'll show you on your foot, is the top. I call it your paw. It's the pad of your paw, right there. And we never, never, never white knuckle it. We are encouraging. We want to get long in our hamstrings and long in our bodies, but we're never, ever, ever white knuckling. What this is going to give you the opportunity to do is to learn how to fold into your poses, or fold over. You're actually laying your upper body onto your lower body, not folding in, which so many people do. That's not what we really want to do in a forward bend. You want to be inhaling. I'm going to take this left leg we're going to put the entire portion of the bottom of the foot on the inside of the right leg, letting this leg either fall naturally out to the side, or if it's too much on your hip, it takes a while to get open, so you're going to somehow hold it and suspend it. I will show you how to get up. I know there's a couple of my um, 
friends that are going to do this that are having a tough time with mobility. So we're going to use your block so you're going to keep a chair close by because what you want to do is practice getting, thank you, is practice getting up and down. That's so important that we don't ever get trapped into that non-mobility fear factor. When you fall, you have to be able to get yourself off the ground. So please don't ever stop working on that. So if you need to suspend it, suspend it there. You can use your block, you can use a rolled up shawl or a blanket. I know that some of you got your bolsters, thank you. You can suspend it with that. Use what works for you, knowing that eventually you're slowly gonna move it out till one day you can do it without any props at all. So my heel is basically almost at my pelvic floor. The outside of my knee is encouraged to go to the ground on the, uh, on the outside of the knee, uh, to the ground beside me. This leg is directly off my hip and my toes are coming towards my body. So I'm already immediately long in my hamstrings. I'm paying very close attention to the space between my heel and my sit bone. I want to feel long there. I'm going to take this off so you can see what I'm doing here. I want you to take the, the lower part of your belly and the upper part of your thigh and bring them together. So when you see me do this movement here, I'm actually moving my sit bone behind me so that I can fold over my legs better. I'm going to keep my face looking at the camera, looking at you is what I'm pretending I'm doing, and folding my upper body over my lower body with my five for five breaths. I'm doing this while keeping my shoulder blades behind my back because we hyperextend nothing. So taking in a nice, long, beautiful inhale, I want you to exhale, and now you're going to bring the upper part of your belly onto your thigh. If physically you can't do this yet, which lots of people can't and some people never can, then what you're going to do is visualize it and at least make the moves. If you're still up here, that's okay. I still want your chin forward, your shoulder blades down your back and your torso long and your leg with your toes coming towards your body and your heels going away the entire time we're doing this. You don't relax at a pose. We don't do that. We're in yoga until I say namaste. So you must remain in yoga with your body and with your breath, okay? So inhale, exhale, find that space. As you empty your diaphragm, you will find more space. And remember, we're not white knuckling our foot towards our body, we're encouraging a long torso and a long, beautiful leg. Remember, the longer your hamstrings, the healthier your lower back and your hips are going to be. Now I want you to take in another nice, long, beautiful inhale because you're setting the intention for your, up, for your lower rib cage to come in contact with your leg now. So see, I'm nice and long in my torso, as long as I can get it, five foot four. And I'm nice and long in my beautiful long legs. I picture myself as quite willowy. So just mind that. <laughs> I'm tall and willowy. <laughs> Taking in another nice, long, beautiful breath. Inhale, and this time on the exhale, we're bringing our chest, we're bending our elbows because that's the language your back needs in order to bring your back into the stretch now. Ideally, you want your elbows touching the ground on either side of your leg. If that's not possible, just bend them slightly so that you learn that language. It's body language and it works very well. So once again, bring those toes towards your body, send your heels away. You're long in your hamstrings, Take in a nice, long, beautiful breath. And this time you're going to surrender. Stay down there, the top middle part of your forehead towards your leg. I want you to feel your long, beautiful neck. I want you to feel 
your long, beautiful back. I want you to be aware of your long, beautiful hamstrings. Remember, we need three breaths just to put off that, just to trigger that natural hydration system in our body so that your body is actually sending nutrients to the areas of our body that we're just well opening up, which I'm guessing on you guys is going to be behind here in your hip and in the entire length of the back of your legs. So we're going to take it for one more nice juicy breath as we inhale a complete surrender. Bend your elbows. Bring your toes towards your body and your heels away. Long in your beautiful neck. Long in your beautiful back and deep in your beautiful breath. Inhale as you bring your eyes to your toes and then on the five second exhale, find yourself up with a neutral spine and bring your strap with you. Good job. Bring your right foot to meet your left foot. And let's just do a little bit of a hip opener. Coddle your toes. We've done this too. I think I believe we did this the other day. You're going to lengthen your back. You're going to use the leverage that coddling your toes allows you. You're going to lengthen your back. Put your shoulder blades down your back. You're going to bring your elbows down and make contact with your calves. Keeping your chin long. See how my whole face is showing. Not just this. My whole face. Inhale, and then exhale as you come in. Surrendering your forehead towards the mat, using your finger or your toes as leverage, doing whatever depth you can do in this because you're going into the outside of your hips, which is what we're always going to work on. It takes a long time to open up hips that haven't been opened in a while, so a little bit will be done every class. You shouldn't be looking at me right now. You should be down and breathing. Inhaling your five seconds of intention. And exhaling your commitment to the pose. Inhale, bring your eyes to the top of the yoga mat, and then exhale as you gently push away your feet and come up to neutral spine, shoulder blades down your back. Inhale, send just your left leg away. You might want to tap it out a bit. That's a good stretch for you. I do want your hips square. This is an entirely different pose. This is the one we're doing today. So you're keeping your hips square because I want to get in the back of your hips a little bit. Remember what I said about your strap. You should try and keep your spot way tidier than I ever keep mine. Like I said, don't do what I do, do what I say. So you're supposed to always keep the spot sacred. But that's hard to do sometimes. This goes on the paw of your foot, right on the fleshy spot. Remember, we're not yanking, we're encouraging a nice, beautiful straight back and a long, beautiful deep breath. So watch this movement. I'm just picking up my bottom and sending this sit bone behind me slightly. And then right now, my lower tummy is already touching my upper thigh. So the fold has begun. I'm keeping my chin long because I want my sternum long. So I can fold over that leg and really get into my hamstrings. That is the purpose of this pose. So taking in a nice, long, beautiful inhale, I have my hands like I'm writing English. I should probably back up a little for you is what I should do. There you go. And then I'm going to inhale and I'm going to exhale. And I'm going to bring my upper belly onto my thigh. So like I said, if you physically can't do this, what you need to be doing is visualizing it and keeping your sternum long. Right now, that's where the work is. Feel how that 
Okay, going like that, but you don't want to go like that. We're not hyperextending our shoulders or our neck. We're extending our sternum. We're making ourselves long here. Another nice, long, beautiful breath. And on the exhale, we're bringing our lower rib cage. Long in your sternum. Take another breath there. Now you're going to inhale a long, beautiful hamstring. You're going to exhale as you bend your elbows and you're going to bring your chest onto your leg, long in your sternum. Toes are coming towards your body. Heel is going away. You are in a full pose. As you take in your nice, long, beautiful breath, and then exhale to a full surrender. Elbows are touching the ground or close. Back is long. If you're still up here, that's perfectly fine. What I want you to be doing is getting long in your back because what you're doing by putting those shoulder blades down and making your heart center the most prominent part is you're lengthening your spine and you're also strengthening those little muscles. You're gonna feel them a little bit more in the next pose that we do, because we're going to be doing, like I said, arms and back a little bit today. So, you shouldn't be watching me, but you probably are. Take in a nice inhale and go into your full surrender. Three breaths is the magic number, but four is even better because then that's all medicine. Inhale as you bring your eyes to your toes. And then exhale as you slowly, but with great strength, bring up a nice, powerful straight back. Good job. Remove your strap. Put it nicely off to the side. And then once again, bring this left foot to meet the right foot. This time we're going to go out a little bit and do the diamond shape one. Get the outside of the hips. So looking at the space on the inside of your legs, this should be shaped like a diamond. Not a short diamond, a perfectly calibrated diamond. Inhale, shoulder blades down your back, of course, as you exhale, bringing your torso through your hips and coddling your toes once again. Take your breath. Inhale, chin is long. Exhale as you bring your arms to the outside of your calves, making contact with your forearm and the arm. If you can't make contact yet, don't worry about Just set that intention that that's where you want to go. There's not much sense. We're not holding poses really long yet because you're just getting going. You could essentially set yourself up to do that with both your blocks. But like I said, we won't be holding it that long. So take in your breath. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, three breaths, inhale, Bring your eyes to the top of the yoga mat. Exhale, bring your hands down. Take in another inhale. Exhale, straight arms and slowly bring your spine into neutral. Shoulder blades go behind your back. Send your feet away. And let's just walk our hands out. Bring your toes towards your body though because it's the hamstrings we're working on. Send those sit bones behind you. See that slight movement. So when we're doing this, we want to get rid of any flesh or muscle between our sit bone and our mat because it gives us more leverage. We're always looking for leverage. Bring your hands over your toes if you can. If you cannot, I want you to get your strap one more time. Put it on the meat of your feet and this time we're going to do both legs at once. Inhale. Long in your sternum. Exhale. Bring your elbows down on either side of your feet if you can. Long in your back, shoulder blades down your back. Now you're gonna inhale and exhale the full surrender. Two 
Two more nice big five for five breaths. Inhale. Inhale your eyes to your toes. And then exhale as you come up to sitting. Remove your strap. Get your block. Bring yourself into free lotus. Put yourself back on your block. And then let's do our hands one more time. Shoulder blades behind your back. I always start like this because that's just a nice launching off area. Elbows are pointing to where they're supposed to be. Heart center is forward. And hands are nicely on the top of your thighs. Your hips actually. Inhale and exhale your arms out to either side again. You are sending your fingers not only wide, because remember the yoga hand is wide, yoga foot is wide, shoulder blades are down your back, and breath is deep. I love poses where you hold for a while because it gives you time to really establish a relationship with your breath. Taking it all the way down. And letting it all the way out. It takes a while to get used to this breath, but it's the perfect pace for us to gracefully move through poses. Even when we're doing a flow or a hatha, it's the perfect place. It's pace, pardon me. Inhale, now I want you to take your hands and I want your thumbs to be pointing to the wall behind you and your palms to be directly out and your hands are directly off your shoulders. Your spine is over your tailbone. Your crown chakra is attached to the heavens. You are tall in your torso. You are deep in your breath. They seem like very simple little things, but for beginners, this can already be uncomfortable on your arms. But it's good for you to be able to recognize how weak possibly you are and how much work needs to be done. You don't want to be weak when you're still young and want to be using your arms, you want to be strong. Butterflies are beautiful, but they don't live long. Inhale, exhale as you send your fingers even further away, spread them even wider, and your thumbs are now facing the front of the room. You're not like this. That's not how our hands are. Our hands are fully engaged. Let's start with really small circles now. I just want you to feel the muscles that you need to engage. We're getting bigger every time we make a circle. You'd be surprised. Even the women that think they're strong who load firewood and all that, when they start doing these intricate moves, that's when you realize it's really subtle things that I'll teach you throughout this Keep your, keep your arms up. My arms are pretty strong. You keep yours up. It's these subtle little things that I teach you about these little areas, these intricate areas of our body, that when we, one, open them up, and two, strengthen them, make a substantial change in our lives and in our practice. Subtle changes are sometimes the most paramount ones. So you should be doing really wide circles by now. Drawing big circles with your fingertips. Inhale. Exhale to stop. Now start going the other direction. We're almost done. Small circles to start. Small circles that are getting bigger with every move. Always with your breath. You are always celebrating your breath in yoga. You are always breathing. You never hold your breath. Getting bigger. 
bigger. Keep going, keep going. We're almost done. Keep going. Inhale and exhale to a stop. Inhale. Exhale as you bring your thumbs pointing to the room behind you, nice and strong in your arms. I know you can feel them, because I can feel mine. Inhale. Up, 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 right above your crown chakra, into prayer in front of your heart. Good job. It's amazing how weak we can get in areas that we don't even know we're weak in. But here's the good news, we can get strong really quick too. Especially if you were in shape at one point in your life. Muscle does have memory and it doesn't lose it as we get older. So that's been my experience anyway. We're going to go into a pose called sunbird now and there's a couple of really good benefits for it. One, it's more for our arms and our shoulders for your learning lineup. Two, it's superb for balancing. I like to work with balance a lot because every time you're struggling and you're trying to keep your balance, that's the neurotransmitters in your brain are rapid firing to keep you in balance and that's good food for your brain. So it's a very good thing for us to do. We'll be doing it on our feet too, but for now I'm going to bring you into what's called table and we're going to do that by sending our hands away from our body and almost every time we do this they're directly in front of our shoulders of course, so send them far away. Watch my feet, we're going to just move them so they come behind us, right? It's really easy, don't overthink it, anybody can do it. Then I want you to move your knees back in so that when we come up, we're in table. We are right with our hands. I'm going to back up so you can see me. I'll, get, I'll learn this eventually. The hands are directly under my shoulders, my knees are directly under my hips. My neck, I want you to watch me first, but your neck is going to be an extension of your spine. It's not hanging there, and it's not looking up the whole time. We'll do that when we do cat-cow, which we'll do after, but right now I want you called table. So your back is not sway back at all. Your neck is not hanging. Your head is not hanging. You are... As I said yesterday, any time we're engaged, we're slightly pushing away the floor. That's where our strength is going to come from, and that's where our leverage comes from as well. So you're going to inhale, watch me first, neck and extension of time. You're going to inhale your right arm up by your right ear and your left leg straight up behind you, and then bring that toe towards your body. On your right hand, you're keeping that shoulder and that wrist lined up, so you're right above your hand. Okay? And we're going to hold there for three, five, or five breaths. So now I want you to do the pose. Inhale. Your hands are directly under your wrists. Your knees are directly under your hips. The best way to know your hip width is it's pretty much breath. Okay, some people think your hips are, are right under here. They're not. When we talk about that, we're talking about the front hip flexor. Shoulder width is, is shoulder width is, is what that is. So knees are basically brick width apart. Okay? So hands under your shoulders. Neck and this extension of your spine. Bring your right arm forward and your left leg back and be strong in your position so that you're not waving. Make sure your hand is in the five-point hand I told you about yesterday and you're pushing away the floor slightly. Your leg is directly behind you for this one, right off your hip. Two more nice five for five breaths. Inhale, exhale, bring both those limbs down, and now you're going to go up on the other side without looking up. Bring your left arm up by your ear and your right leg straight off your hip. Be pushing away the floor. Nice and strong, using your arm, and nice and steady, five for five for three.
Inhale. As you bring your limbs back down, and then this time you're going to come into child's pose, so you're letting your bottom go to your heels. And then your hands for recovery come down by your feet. Top of your head goes down. Good job. I hope everybody managed to hold that for the three breaths. As you can feel, we're using the parts of the arms that I was introducing you to, basically, by keeping them suspended in the air. You want to learn what parts of your body you're in command of again, which should be every single inch of it. Don't let your ankles tell you how you're going to walk. You tell your ankles. We'll be getting more into feet as we go on. Same with your shoulders. You want to keep them mobile. We don't want frozen shoulder. We want to be totally mobile in our beautiful bodies all the time. Taking in another nice, long, beautiful inhale. You should be in child's pose still, but if you're not, bring your eyes to the top of the yoga mat and bring yourself up into hero's pose. We're going to do sunbird one more time. So inhale, as you bring yourself over into table, that's where we start, hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, back is flat. Neck is an extension of your spine. As you inhale, right arm goes up by your ear with your neck straight and left leg out. Three long, beautiful breaths. Always growing with your pose. Is my arm up by my ear? Is my leg up behind me? Are my hips flat? Because you don't want your hips open to the side. Your hips are square. If I could, I would come around and put a marble on your back. That's how square I want your hips. So be mindful of that. Sorry, I should have told you in the last one. Be very, it's hard when I don't have you in the room here. So one more nice, long, deep, beautiful breath with your right hand by your ears, your left foot out, your toes coming towards your body, your hips square, strong in your body. Inhale. On the exhale, bring those limbs down and go up on the other side. Right leg is back, left leg is up by your ear. Hips are square, toes are coming towards your body. Strong. One more. Inhale. And exhale those limbs down on the floor. Coming back in, this time doing an active child's pose with your hands off of your shoulders, engaged. Nothing is touching the mat. They're engaged to ignite your lymphatic system and bring that forehead down and through. I'm going to get you to bring your eyes to the top of your yoga mat. Inhale yourself back into table. Knees under your hips, hands under your shoulders. Now I want you to watch me first this time. We're just going to bring our right leg back and then bring our toes under our heels. See what I mean by that? Toes under our heels, right? And then the other one too. We're going to come into plank for just five for five breaths. Your belly is engaged so your belly button is going to your spine your hips are not dropping to the ground like that you're in plank nice and solid right nice and solid bottom is not up like that heels are going to the wall behind you arms are engaged right that's plank so i want you to do that for three breaths. So if you were, if you did get in it, I want you to come out now, gently. Now you know the proper way to get in it. So we're going to start again. Inhale. 
Right leg back, left leg back, neck is an extension of the spine. Five for five. Inhale, gracefully drop your knees to the ground, point your toes, bring your bottom to your heels, and this time let yourself come down onto the ground. Forehead touches the ground, arms touch the ground, everything goes into child's pose. I just have to keep an eye on the time. So good job. I hope you're feeling your arms and I hope you're getting to know your breath a little bit better as we do this as well. We're going to do a little bit of a cat-cow. So taking one more breath in child's pose is where you should be. Inhale, bring your eyes to the top of the mat, straighten your arms and then bring yourself into a nice strong table again. Knees are brick width apart, hands are directly under your shoulders. I want you to inhale, and this time you're going to drop your belly button towards the mat. You're going to bring your shoulder blades behind you, and you're going to bring your eyes to the ceiling. Your sit bones are also going to the ceiling. You're going to take a nice five for five there. And then you're going to inhale and go the opposite direction. And this time you're pushing away the floor and the crown chakra. I told you where it was yesterday is shining a beautiful beam of light right between your thumbs. So you're really pushing away the floor. You're fully engaged in this one. It's just fine, goes way up to the heavens, and crown chakra shines between your thumbs. Then you're going to take an inhale, and you're going to exhale the other direction. Inhale. I should have tied back my hair. Inhale. Exhale the other direction. This is the cat. Inhale, exhale, this is the cow. Now inhale, and again, come on back down to child's pose. This is only the second class, so I'm taking it really easy on you. I want you to be able to feel your body, but I don't want you to be so sore that I don't see you again on Friday or Friday night, whenever it is you're watching these and doing these classes. Thank you for the emails. and. Thank you for the inboxes in Texas. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you so much. I enjoy teaching you again. I certainly enjoy how it makes my body feel. We're going to do, like I said, this is a lot of upper body, so I'm just coming closer so you can see me. I want you to bring your shoulder blades down your back. We're in heroes. If you can stay in heroes, good. If not, don't forget the little treat, or the little trick I taught you yesterday about taking your blanket or your green chip foamy, whatever you have, if it's too much, put this on your calves and put your bottom there and it allows you a little bit of extra space and time. You do want to stretch your knees. What we watch for, however, is a twinge. We don't do twinges. Anytime you feel a sharp pain going somewhere, slowly still though, come out of that pose and check in with your body of what's going on with that. We do do uncomfortable. We're, we're pushing boundaries. We're opening up spaces that we've never done before or haven't done in quite some time. So we do get uncomfortable. It's that fine line between pain. Pain's a weird word. We don't want to always give everything pain just because it's uncomfortable. I mean, that's part of where we learn in life and in yoga. Um, just watch your twinges, though, is what I was going to say. So what we're going to do here is just a little shoulder stretch. I'm going to get you to sit on that if that's what you like. I like to sit on this. I like to use this pose because, as you know, I'm a little bit of a feet nut. And I want your metatorso to be engaged. So I also want your big toes to be perfectly lined up right now so that we're getting a nice even stretch, as subtle as it is in our lower bodies at this time. But you're going to take your right hand. You're sending it far away, and you're going to exhale as you bring that right hand into your left hand. I like to carry it all the way over. And then you're going to watch that your torso is straight as you inhale. And exhale your chin away from the shoulder that you're stretching. 
Keep your elbow relatively pointing to the wall behind you on this arm. So you can look back at me. I, want, I don't want this elbow way out there. I want it tucked in somewhat because I want your shoulders right across from each other. And then you're going to inhale, always on a breath. Always, always, always on a breath. Inhale. And then exhale. Your chin away from there. We're going to do three nice, beautiful breaths. Now watch, play with the angle that your chin and your neck is on because this is where fascia loves to thicken. It's your neck, your hips, and your feet everywhere actually, but those are the main spots. So we're going to actually hold this for five breaths. That's about two there. Let's do three. And then play with where you can move your chin to, keeping your neck straight. As I said, you've got a dual action going on here. I love my dual actions. We're going to count this next breath as four. And then we're going to count one more breath for five. Always growing with our pose. We're then going to just gently release that hand, bring our head back to center, and just like our feet yesterday, as soon as that arm comes down to it being below our shoulder, the awkwardness will leave our shoulder. So start rolling that shoulder and start using that arm. We want to have nice stretched arms, nice stretched shoulders and nice strong arms. Roll them together now. Taking in an inhale, exhale, tuck it in that small of your back, send the hand over to the other hand, and this hand encourages it right at your side, right where your waist goes in, at the top of your hip, and then send that elbow away. Inhale, and then exhale your chin away from that shoulder. Watch where you're putting it. Use your grace. Use your intention, and then inhale, and grow with that pose. Adjusting your chin, adjusting your neck, crown chakra going to the heavens. Two more. Just be with the discomfort, knowing that you're making headway on thinning out some fascia that's getting in the way of you being completely mobile in your shoulders. Inhale, release this hand first, bring your neck back to center and slowly let that arm come back to where you got it. Start moving it slowly. We're gentle with ourselves when we're doing the work. Good job. I hope you all held that for the five breaths because that's where you make headway. And then we're going to go the opposite direction that we went when we did the both shoulders last time. Good job. Inhale. As you bring your hand to your right and your feet to your left. And then once again, we're going to walk ourselves on our sit bones to mid-mat. I'm just going to do a little bit of a time check. I have to, to keep myself honest with this. When I take you down to Shavasana, I'll do like I did yesterday. I'll play the bowl for a little while. I'll bring in another instrument on Friday. And then I will do my blessing for you and then let you stay in Shavasana for as long as you want to. So I always leave five minutes for it in a one hour class as I explain that keeps with the integrity of Ashtanga Yoga. As you can see, we add in a lot of uh, more dance stretches today than gymnastics, but likewise the same, pretty much the same. So that's why I do what I do. What we're going to do now is send our feet 
and our knees. Everything lined up with our hips. Like I said, if you check, I'm almost always brick width apart. That's your hip width apart. So what we're going to do is send our shoulder blades down our back. This is boat. I want you to get used to it. So for now, you can bring your hands right here on your leg. Shoulder blades go down your back because you're still leading with your heart. Bring yourself so your back is straight and then bring your legs up if you can. We always want a strong core. Your toes can be touching now. If you want, go ahead and release your legs and just hold your hands there. I want you to be engaged in your tummy. This is engaged. Shoulder blades down your back. Neck is an extension of your spine. That was three breaths. Now what I want you to do is just a couple. Good job. Inhale, hand mudra concentration. And vertebra by vertebra by vertebra. Come on down to the mat. We're not quite going into Shavasana yet. We're going to do just a little bit of a hip opener. So you're going to bring your left leg up. You're going to put your right foot on top of your thought quad, right in the middle with an engaged foot. Not just like that. It's not hanging there like that. Your foot is engaged. Your head, neck, and shoulders are off the ground. Your belly is engaged. You are two inches below your knee, if you can. If you can't, that's where you'll go. Then you're going to bring your hand in the whole cause. Bring your leg up for a deeper stretch. Keep it like this if you don't want deeper. Ideally, what we do is inhale and then nose to toes. If this is your move for today, that's fine. It's a hip opener. So you're actually encouraging this knee away from your body, okay? So nice inhale. Nose to your toes. One more breath. Inhale. As you release your head, neck, and shoulders back down to the ground, keep your grip on your leg for two more nice breaths. Then inhale, exhale that foot down, bring your right foot down, and then bring your left foot on the top of that quad. Engage with your foot. Every side of your body is going to be different. I call this my Uncle Richie's hip, because I have no idea what I'm doing with such a stiff hip. Two inches below your knee, remember, and this knee is going away from your body. Inhale, head, neck, and shoulders come off the ground. Exhale, your leg up if you want, or keep it at a 90 degree angle. Get your knee going away from your body. Inhale, be in control of what your muscles are doing. Exhale, no, whoops, whoops. And if you fall out of pose, just make it part of the pose. So you should still be in your pose. And ideally, exhale, nose to toes for three breaths nice breaths inhale exhale your head neck and shoulders down hold for two more breaths send that knee away remember we're doing some work here and then inhale as you release your right foot to the mat, your left foot to the mat. And now you're going to send your feet away. You're going to lift up your chest and bring your shoulder blades together. You're going to close your eyes. If you have, I said get a throw blanket. For me, it is, it's cold. So you want to bring a blanket down and you want to go into Shavasana. And you want to stay in Shavasana. 
for at least five minutes. So I'm going to play the bowl for you and then give you your blessing. And thank you now for joining me. Thank you for trusting me. I hope to see more people come on here live and I, can, I know that my friends are watching it in the evenings that can't come to morning classes. Thank you for that. I recognize the place in you where the entire universe dwells. I recognize the place in you that is of love. I recognize the place in you that is of light. When you are in that place in you and I am in that place in me, we are one. Namaste. Thank you for coming.